मिलिंद मोरे सर चिदानंद जी के बाद मिलिंद मोरे सर क्योंकि उन्होंने ये सब्जेक्ट दिया था एंड देन पारिक सर अनम्यूट प्लीज प्लीज अनम्यूट चिदानंद जी प्लीज अनम्यूट यस नाउ नाउ आई हैव अनम्यूटेड प्लीज प्लीज गो अहेड नमस्ते एवरीबॉडी गुड इवनिंग टू वन एंड ऑल आई एम हैप्पी टू जॉइन ऑल ऑफ यू वंस मोर दिस इवनिंग एंड आई थैंक मिलिंद मोरे फॉर प्रपोजिंग दिस टॉपिक फॉर दिस इज अ वेरी चैलेंजिंग टॉपिक द टॉपिक दिस इवनिंग इज डेथ एंड लव एट द आउटसेट we must be very clear that we are not talking about clinical death clinical death when this physical body ceases to function is not a big issue at all if we look at life from broader angles of view of course considering all the attachments that we have to people to things to places and uh, all those attachments are rooted in uh, our attachment to ourselves uh, considering our attachments clinical death has always caused lot of fear in us we notice that especially in these covid times everybody is very very concerned about some near and dear ones possibly dying or they themselves becoming a victim to this deadly disease therefore we don't want to be insensitive to disease and clinical death however this evening's topic regards death from a different angle of seeing so what is the death that we are talking about and how does death connect with love once more clinical death has no connection with love clinical death is like a coma and not a full stop in some mysterious journey of consciousness and we don't want to get into those arguments where people wonder whether it is the same individual consciousness that moves on and probably takes another body and all that that whole subject has a different smell altogether and whatever be the truth of that subject is of no interest to us in the light of this evening's topic where we want to ask does death have a relation with love and the great mystics who have pondered life in great depth talk about a certain death which not only has an intimate relation with love but it is in fact no different from love death is love and love is death is the voice of mystics those penetrating uh, minds so we want to examine how death can be love or love can be death in his teachings of course revered krishna ji has thrown a lot of light on two sets one set is thought and you may add to that set the self which to some people has to be made more clear calling it the separate self by self we mean the separate self by self we mean uh, my self is different from your self 
and then again is different from somebody's self. So without getting into those definitions again, we talk about the self, then there is thought, and then there is time. Self, thought, and time are different sides of different aspects of the same issue. What I mean is, where there is the self, there is thought. Where there is thought, there is time. And where there is time, there is thought. Where there is thought, there is self. In other words, you know, elsewhere we could have talked about two sides of the same coin. Now here there are three sides of an entity and these three are ever together. The self, thought and uh, time are together. And then there is this, this love and death and life. Death and life come together in the second set. Of course, we don't mean the, the life of the self, the, the egoistic life, the life of jealousy or pride, life of hurt and different uh, low or high self-esteem and so on. But there is a certain vibrant life. Probably we call that kind of life uh, a clear stream flowing. So you have to say just once more, thought, time and self on one hand, maybe it is one realm one frame of reference. You know, it is like avidya bhumi, if I may use a single Sanskrit word. In avidya bhumi, a frame of reference marked by inattention, ignorance, error, confusion, etc. In that frame of reference, there is the self, there is thought, operation of thought, and then there is time. And then there is Vidya Bhumi, the frame of reference for you and I to apply our minds to. When we have an insight into this second frame of reference, Vidya Bhumi, it is in this Vidya Bhumi that there is love, there is life, and there is death. So now it is time we consider what kind of death we are talking about. One of the ways we may appreciate death in this totally different sense is it is a state where there is no image. Freedom from images is death. For the moment you and I find ourselves holding on to an image, in the clutches of an image. Sometimes not an image, but many images. Thought, as all of us know, is ever busy in comparing, in assessing or evaluating how worthy I am, how successful I am, or what a failure I am, all these is the endless mischief of thought and the very criteria, the very yardsticks that we use to assess ourselves, judge ourselves as successful, failure, good, bad, etc., are all so questionable. However, we have countless yardsticks, countless way to pigeonhole ourselves pigeonhole somebody saying, oh, he's a small person. Oh, this is a big fellow. Oh, that's a very eminent person. And this fellow is worth peanuts. Oh, what oh, treacherous thought is. Therefore, in the domain of thought, all kinds of judgmentalism is sure to raise its ugly head. But in 
life in that clear stream of life where there are no images there is true love therefore freedom from images is death which is love and this death is totally unconnected to clinical death let's leave clinical death behind and dwell on this death which is at once love now why do we call it death if it is freedom from images we may just say freedom from images and stop there but we do call it death mystics call it death because there is a certain dying there is a certain dying out of that pure insight of the falsity of images falsity of call it self judgment call it judgment of others how silly how shallow and how painful how uh, undignified it is to look at somebody as a small person and to look at somebody else as enviable as some you know as somebody who we want to become like her or we want to become like him this process of thought is really an ugly affair so we call this death for one dies to judgmentalism one dies to this images of the past one dies to regrets one dies to pride over probably how you know we were uh, we were felicitated we were honored we got a title we got a trophy we were called to the stage and how wonderful it was and so on all these kinds of images take us on a roller coaster ride in uh, the life marked by the self but when we die to all this pride and hurt when we die to all this sense of high and low big and small that death is is the same as freedom from images therefore while people with less understanding of the matter make living in the present a, a, an affair of will oh i am going to live in the present i am not going to let my mind go to the past i am not going to let my mind get anxious about the future da 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 they think and they want to go about it with uh, you know will power you know living in the present is a, a popular topic if one of you writes a to z of living in the present it it will sell like hot cakes but uh, you know if you tell them these are the seven steps or the three techniques or the five ways to live in the present you make it all an affair of you know effort and will power and you know going about doing something then it is terrible injustice to that beautiful topic of living in the living moment the present moment alone is living moment moments gone by are dead moments moments yet to come are unborn there is only the present as someone beautifully said you may refer to april 20 as future five days from now on april 20 let's meet at gateway of india mumbai you may say now on the so called april 20 when you meet your friend at the gateway of india mumbai and you know excusing covid you shake hands with your friend do you say ah finally we have met at this future date when you actually shake hands with your friend in front of or behind the gateway of india you say here we are you use present tense here we are at this moment now we are together we are shaking hands it's neither the past nor the future so 
the point i am making is when you actually meet the so called future date for which i gave an example april 20 it is the present so is the case with let's say march 15 today we talk about march 15 2021 as the past but if on march 15 you were with your sister sipping some hot tea on that so called march 15 sitting with your sister sipping some hot tea did you say well we are sipping some tea in the past when you actually meet with any moment it is only the present moment you can never shake hands with the moments of the past you can never shake hands with the moments of the future what is is the present but the self has a clever way of giving reality to the so called future and to the so called past therefore we say that this business of living in the present has to be a matter of understanding and not will so when we say ending of images what it boils down to is not belonging to any image we do not belong to any community any sect any religion any school of thought any linguistic group any geographical group there is rising above all kinds of belonging so therefore once more we call it death dying to all belonging for sense of belonging is the product of thought so how do we connect this death dying to the past dying to images dying to memories how do we connect it to love love is in the purest sense of the word love is 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 once more where the self is not love is where the self is not now at once it gets down to love is where thought is not love is where time is not so self thought and time have no room in love this is indeed challenging to our conditioned mind our conditioned mind and conditioned even heavily by hollywood and bollywood and all sorts of things which others write and sometimes in crazy moments we also write some nonsensical stuff and all this media all this material available around us inside us would make love a matter of memories love for people in their ignorance is clinging to particular memories so in the name of love they want to remember some place where they had ice cream together they want to remember even some work that they did together so we need to examine this operation of thought thought in fact has a lot of emotional and sensational content with due respect to emotions with due respect to sensations which are part of life generally we need to examine whether they are true whether they are real whether they are you know uh, in the domain of fancy are they fact or are they fancy a little child takes a doll and clings so much to the doll this girl of 6 years let us say embraces holds on to a doll so tightly that at night even when her mother or father puts her on the bed and says go to sleep 
the little girl of six years would ensure that her doll is in her tight grip. Holding her doll very tightly, she agrees to sleep. And you know how what happens in the next few hours. She rolls several times on the bed in one direction and the doll may fall off the bed in another direction. But there is a state of mind where to that six-year-old girl, the doll in her hands meant the whole world. Nothing else mattered. Like that, friends, when we are in the domain of thought, when we take lots of unreal things to be real, we are no different from that six-year-old girl. Memories, all kinds of images, all kinds of pictures, all kinds of sensations. Therefore, we are questioned. Mystics ask us a question. Is the emotional content of thought to be taken as love? Is love the same as some kind of emotional you know, movement? Now, I already said, with due respect to emotions, we don't want to trample upon anybody's sentiments or emotions. Just like we don't want to forcibly take away the doll from that six-year-old girl and just remain insensitive to any amount of crying that the girl may get into. That is not the point. But with eyes of wisdom, we can easily see that this six-year-old grandniece of ours, or whoever, you know, is in her own illusion. That tight embrace, that tremendous attachment that she has towards that doll is an illusion we are able to see. Now, what we do is a different story. What we do, whether we have to advise her to drop that doll, we don't, don't have to get into those details at all. Therefore, this topic, how <clears throat> love is not memories, love is not possessiveness, love is not jealousy, because possessiveness and jealousy go together. I say I love somebody and when somebody else says he loves the same person and maybe he claims that that person loves him more than he or she loves me, I get a little uneasy. Those are the symptoms of possessiveness. And in no time it turns into jealousy. No wonder this jealousy, this possessiveness, this uh, clinging to the false extends way beyond ordinary relationships, parents and children, between siblings, and of course the so-called romantic love between man and woman, or man and man, woman and woman. There are so many bonds that come into pic picture in life. And this possessiveness, <laughs> jealousy, etc., are seen in these relationships. Without going into details, don't we read in newspapers every second day, even murders being committed in the name of love. Somebody says he loved some girl, and then he may murder some other, some other person who was also trying to come into this scenario. Or the worst thing is, you know, when the girl refuses to have, have anything to do with this boy, he, a while ago he had claimed that he loves her so much. Now he gets into fury and, uh, you know, pours a, a, a bottle of kerosene on her and sets her ablaze. Such heinous crimes are committed. We read about them in newspapers and other media. And the word love is used. You can understand what people have made out of love. Lastly, I would say that the misunderstood love extends even to the so-called spiritual world. 
love of guru love of a symbol love of some particular book love of some so called holy place love of so called certain tools or let's say some instruments uh, people may use some you know some artifacts and so on so in the name of love people become so possessive people deny uh, to other people their necessary freedom necessary space this is my place of meditation don't you enter and sit here in this kind this is my guru this is my ashram this is my religion this is my holy book i love my religion and so on into all these processes of thought we need to we need to inquire once more i would say this is not about going from one sentiment to the opposite somebody is very attached to uh, some uh, symbol and uh, if you and i say oh, i don't i am i don't have any attachment to these symbols and we want to do something opposite take that symbol and put it below our foot <laughs> that would be you know equally uh, horrible in the name of no attachment we are not to you know uh, do something uh, which has the foul smell of hatred or dislike or some kind of trampling upon somebody's sentiments and so on then compassion or uh, you know certain healthy sentiments have gone out of the window so without making it very long let me summarize what i have thought of sharing with all of you this evening death is not clinical death death is dying to images and images are a domain where there is the operation of thought of memory of i me and my of the self of time of course we mean psychological time and in that domain of time and self and thought and all these there cannot be true love in dying to these images in dying to uh, wanting to become in dying to you know see ourselves in some particular way where we imagine that our life is now successful and so on in all those uh, fictitious ideas uh, to which our mind tends to cling there is in fact a bondage so one is to be free of them and that is lastly and one more time not a matter of will it is it is insight therefore it is through seeing that what we are doing is so childish that we uh, through that seeing itself we, we we get free there is then right action we say seeing is right action leave alone uh, the statement the seeing leads to right action why that gap at all seeing is right action of course that becomes another wonderful topic for another discussion some other day how seeing is action we would not even want to say seeing leads to right action as though there is a gap so why in what sense do we say there is no gap in what sense do we you know object to that expression leads to seeing leads to right action etc has to be examined so death is dying to memories dying to images dying to i am so and so i am such and such etc and love is basically the absence of the self love is where there is no possessiveness no jealousy or rather there is a breaking down of barriers and there is a great natural being that sahaja stiti as they call it is love not anything kritrima artificial with these words uh, let me pause um, i am on travel and i am in chennai and i may have to leave after a few minutes but i would like to join for a few more minutes 
and sorry to this evening i won't be available for any questions also i'll just stay quietly for some time and quietly disappear thank you all namaskar thank you thank you very much sir could <laughs> uh, we allow question immediately so that you can answer them one or two person no 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 i think today for a change uh, let okay. me be unquestionable <laughs> okay okay thank you thank you but seeing seeing is doing is a subject for you to all right next time later. some so other later. time so sir next uh, next Thursday we take this as a subject do you mind sir oh seeing we we don't know uh, you know we'll we'll decide in a day or two harshad bhai okay. will uh, you know okay uh, okay help us finalize okay okay sir milin more sir would you please would you please yes, Yes, Unmute and thank you very I, much. I hope everybody uh, is next. I, I hope I'm audible because uh, yeah, I yeah, have moved to yeah, a remote yeah. location. Okay. Audible. <laughs> thank you. Audible. Thanks to the uh, thank you, sir. Thanks to the technology that uh, it's amazing to uh, sit in a almost a forest-like area and uh, be able to communicate with everyone from different parts of the country. Uh, uh. So uh, I. I so maybe I, I could begin with uh, saying that actually this thought very uh, instinctively came to me about proposing for this topic of death. Uh, it, I think it was about two or three uh, 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 sessions earlier uh, when we were discussing about some point and trying to listen to each other. And at one point I felt that we are not really listening to each other. And, and at that point I felt that can I, can I keep my thoughts, can I keep my uh, desire to express myself a little bit on hold uh, to listen to others? Uh, and that led to the instant thought about, can I die to that thought? <laughs> and that's how in that particular meeting towards the end, I, I, I felt that you know, we should discuss about that. Uh, of course, uh, as Swamiji uh, brought out that we are not talking about clinical death. Now, that is a fact of life and uh, uh, all of us understand uh, that part, that it is inevitable and uh, it is something as a fact that we see. Uh, so, with, with that uh, as the background, uh, when we look at it, and as Swamiji also uh, talked about the aspect of how the image formation takes place and how we are attached to these images and then how these images lead to uh, other aspects of life, be it uh, attachment or jealousy or envy. Now the ground is already prepared moment the attachment comes in. So the question is, uh, uh, is about dying to that. Uh, and when I look at life around me, as a fact in the nature, we see life and death, but I also see that in my own body, for example, our body constitutes, constitutes of you know uh, billions of cells and uh, uh, every moment there are thousands or lakhs as scientific studies have revealed uh, talk about uh, them dying and talk about them renewing themselves at the physical level itself uh, uh, it, it is scientific studies also talk about uh, 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 our whole body renewing itself every few years uh, so there is some uh, renewing which is happening and renewing implies that something is dying uh, in, in one sense. So that is at the physical level. Uh, when it comes to the uh, aspect of mind, we also see that, well, come, before coming to mind, I think if I look at the senses, when we look at what we see or what we taste or what we hear uh, or what we touch, now again, there is a sense of uh, uh, coming and going. There is nothing permanent in this. Uh, when I see something, it is for a moment or few, when I taste something, it is there for a while and goes. So even at the physical sense level or a sense perception level, uh, uh, nothing is, everything is temporary. It is all rising and dying also. So uh, that's what we see around. Coming at the mind level, we see that the, it is the same thing. The thoughts come and go, uh, the feelings come and go, the emotions come and go, uh, the perceptions come and go. So 
so that that's how one sees around the life that there is nothing permanent in that way then why is it that we hold on to our arguments why is it that we hold on to impress upon others something uh, to justify oneself to it is why is it so easy to for us to condemn why is it easy it become it's so easy for us to justify or uh, identify with something or uh, attach with something uh, is that natural or we make it natural in a in, in a certain way which perhaps we don't understand uh, so this is a question for me uh, and uh, and this is what i would like to explore uh, as to why we as humans uh, are prone to a way of looking at things or are prone to uh, live a life which is so reactive which is so uh, it, it, there is such an urgency of immediacy in kind of living can we hold certain things for a while and see how things change or how things happen uh, can i can i see that and i find that there is a great value in it in my own personal life uh, i have seen myself working you know in a way where everything had to be done day before yesterday to a point where i can take a pause now i can be i have learned to be tentative i have learned to see things in a little slow manner and i see great value in it uh, there are many things which perhaps one is attached to one can question that in in a manner uh, by not reacting to it immediately so in that sense uh, do i see the value of not holding do i see the value of not aligning do i see the value of not clinging to something do i see the value in not attaching to something yes there is something there uh, and in in a sense is it not dying to that thing uh, i mean if the question kind of expands in that way so i'll put this as a uh, as a question to all of us uh, i'm sure what i'm saying is nothing new uh, everybody understands that the, the the only difficulty is of of seeing it in practice uh, so so i just uh, would like to read out a, a, a passage which though not directly talks about uh, dying and love or death of love but it does in a way connect up now this was a, a dialogue which krishnamurti has with david young in ohio in 1944 and uh, the topic of the particular page is uh, let the conscious mind be busy awaken the other part to observe and i think it uh, kind of i thought it kind of hints at what the question started it for me that while we are busy arguing or busy discussing or having a dialogue with everyone around us can i also awaken something else which is also observing so that's the topic let the conscious mind be busy awaken the other part to observe so it will just take about maybe 2 minutes so uh, i will i'll read this and i'll finish with that so it goes like this instead of stopping the thought process watch it like a movie this is to be distinguished from letting it flow unconsciously instead do it consciously rather project the unconscious into the conscious mind until the whole of the conscious mind has been unraveled during an activity such as washing dishes the process of watching can go on now i am talking to you my attention is on you but the photographic process is going on when i give a lecture my whole attention is on the audience but the recording process continues and afterwards i can look at my inward reaction if i am talking to someone about something that occupies merely my superficial attention i'm aware of what is going on inside me but i cannot give my whole attention to think about it until i am alone you begin to see yourself at first you'll be ashamed that but that will pass okay 
you begin to see yourself at first you will be ashamed but that will pass you will become interested in what lies behind those thoughts and feelings the photographic process will continue the photograph will be there to examine in between activities once begun and given the right environment the awareness is like a flame it will grow immeasurably the difficult thing is to begin the faculty by right environment i mean not to be tired have enough time to be aware work on it and give it enough fuel the fuel is one's daily life look and see when you are sensuous sex is just one part of it take sensuality in its most general sense eating sense of power achievement taking sight in fact craving in all its forms we have to watch very carefully all the time any feeling for example envy or anger is a result of the past you must work on this think about it and try to see it in all its aspects calmly detachedly that is trying to free oneself from the past you must meditate on this until you feel it all throughout your being not just one layer but all the layers then there will be great calmness in finite peace it is very revealing to examine the thought that the mind has at any moment and find out why the mind has that thought yes so i have finished with this uh, maybe we can continue i thank you very much sir thank you very much for sharing such a good discourse may i request harshad sir to go ahead <coughs> okay <coughs> good evening friends thank you milind and chidanand ji for giving a very good uh, introduction and uh, ideas questions about the topic which is love and death now the love in the sense in which krishnamurti like love is when the self the ego is not that means there is no jealousy attachment fear anger freedom from all that then only love is possible so one has to look at uh, what is happening in our daily life whenever these problems come like jealousy fear attachment one has to look at look at it very very carefully and in my life when i was very deeply attached to somebody i was watching all these feelings anger fear jealousy loneliness i have gone through all that observed that and i feel that i have come out and uh, then only real love is possible and then one can love not only one person but many many is love is a state of being in which there are no problem there are no thinking no images and so it is not just loving krishna murti or somebody but love is a state of freedom and such love is very very rare in our life and that is why krishna ji says if parents really loved their children we would would not have war and we would have real peace on earth and so this love is not there attachment is there and then it creates many many problems in relationship and uh, there is one song which i like which says prem prem sab koi kahe everybody talks about love but nobody really loves and knows what love is 
because if a person really feels love, he will not remain separate from the world. It says, Prem Prem Sab Koi Kahe Par Prem Na Jane Koi Jo Koi Jane Jagat Ma Achi Juda Rahe Na Koi That means we don't remain separate like an ego, I am separate from others. That is because there is a thinking and the thinking creates this sense of I, me, and then there is a you, and then there is a duality, and then there are conflicts in relationship. So most relationships are full of conflicts because there is this sense of I, me, ego exists. And uh, this topic of love and death, that means no sense of I. And that is the state of love. So actually, the state of love is the state of psychological death. But this happens very, very rarely, though people can explain everything because Krishnaji has explained everything. And when I decided to join Krishnamurti school in 1979, and before that, I wrote a spontaneous letter to Krishnaji. And in that, there is some one sentence which came out. I wrote that I would like to teach to your students in Krishnamurti schools about love, beauty, and life. And I also wrote that these things cannot be taught. And I don't know how to teach these things, but I can teach physics and mathematics for which I am very much qualified. So I taught physics and mathematics and I like teaching physics, mathematics. But more important than that is about the quality of our life, our mind, what is happening within us, and to watch very, very carefully. And that state, it requires the freedom to watch. Maybe initially, one needs aloneness to watch, but when we become very good at looking at ourselves, it can go on in our daily life. And even when in relationship, if there is a jealousy or fear or anger comes, we can see it directly. That means one has to be in touch with what is every moment. And effortlessly, because you cannot do this with an effort. So only people who are very, very passionate and who want to go really at the depth of our problems, psychological problems, one needs that kind of awareness and effortless ongoing awareness in which whatever is happening is revealed. So this kind of love, which is a freedom from this ego self is very, very rare. Maybe that is the aim or the goal of religious spiritual life. And so Krishnaji always talked about that at the end because he talked about all the problems which are bothering us, fear, desire, pleasure. So I like to say something about love. What Krishnaji has said is very, very beautiful in commentaries on living. And in very short sentences, Krishnaji is saying something very, very deep. And one thing which I read where, uh, when I read love in relationship is a purifying process as it reveals the ways of the self. 
and without this revelation relationship has very little significance so a real relationship love is the process in which we learn about ourselves and that learning can go on it is not a accumulated learning and learning from that gathering of knowledge it is something very fresh and uh, here krishna ji says love is a strange thing and how soon it wizers how soon the smoke smothers the flame like when two people when they begin to love each other they are very much loving but when they live with each other for few days then the images are built about each other and then they don't see things very clearly and then many images are built and then anger and fear and jealousy and all this our uh, feelings come when we live together physically so <clears throat> this is the real challenge whether one can learn in relationship not in isolated med meditation and i feel that i really learn from relationship and when that it was full of attachment there was anger there is a fear there is a lot of sorrow i went through it but i was able to come out of it and then i really felt i am really free you know so i am speaking from my own life it's not quoting krishna murti but quotations are very beautiful but we can learn we we are really awake and uh, here it says without love do do what you will there can be no chastity and love is not of the mind it is not in the net of thoughts it cannot be sought out cultivated cherish it is when the mind is silent and the heart is empty of the things of the mind so only when there is a real innocence freedom freedom without images when there is no self there is a state of love and that is a psychological death which is a freedom or uh, if i say little bit about raman maharshi he had the feeling an experience of death which came to him at the age of 17 in which he saw his body dying but he was fully alive and that experience which was at a psychological level it was a genuine experience which made him which made him free and he left his house and went without fear to arunachal and he meditated and there was no nothing his mind was very empty and very full of something which we cannot describe and then later on he had another experience in which he saw the body dying and even the color of the skin has changed he saw that his friend who was with him was crying and he thought that raman maharshi has died and so he was crying but raman maharshi was able to see 
from outside the body. And then after a few minutes, there was some kind of electric current in the body and the body came back to life. So it was a death at the physical level. And so such things can also happen to mystics who have gone very, very deep into the spirituality, have really been free from the fear. <clears throat> And <clears throat> why it is possible, why it is difficult to die psychologically? Because it means there is no thinking. And that state of no thinking, which is a psychological death, is it creates a lot of fear in people of not being. But that state in which there is no thinking is actually the state of freedom. Freedom from I, freedom from thinking, freedom from images. It is fully alive state in which everything is seen very, very clearly, very, very beautifully. But people are afraid of that state. And so the mind continues to chatter and it wants to remain alive. It doesn't want to die. And uh, another thing Krishnaji says, love is the only true revolution. But love is not an idea. It is when the thought is not. And so there are many, many beautiful quotations of Krishnamurti about love, about death. And one can meditate and not think about it. Thinking about it and becoming very good, it means very little as long as there is no freedom, freedom from the self the me, I, which creates many problems in relationship. So I can go on. I, I used to talk about this, my favorite topics, love, beauty, life to students for many, many years. And I learn from many songs also, many beautiful songs. Like, a song which is, says, Mana apni jeb se fakir hai, fir bhi yaro dil ke hum amir hai. That richness in the heart, that is a real love. And that love is not for somebody. It is not attachment. It is a state of being open to nature, to people, and looking, whether it is Krishnamurti or somebody else and listening to people. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, any question, comment, please raise your hand. Okay, Dinesh. Yes, Dinesh. Sir, I want to discuss uh, one point with you. We say that the thought is to be free. We should be free from the thought. But we have to keep uh, it for the reference as in your dialogue also. You said... Uh, are you able to listen me, sir? Yeah, I, I am able to listen, but I did not say that one should be free from thinking. There is another dimension which can look at thinking. And that is very important. Because okay. without thinking, we cannot have a dialogue also. 
right so you want to say that uh, death death means uh, death from the past memories yes death of the yes. past memories yes yes but for reference we require all the past memories as uh, you also said that I, when i met first time with, with the krishna murti and all that all, all the time you give also references of the old time past yes. time so for that we require uh, memories also so the real yes. challenge is how you can remain with the your memories and uh, at the same time you remain free also from that yes, exactly. so how uh, so mm. it is a real challenge so uh, how do you address because in my case as you are given your refer uh, reference of experience in yes. my case i find that the conscious mind uh, okay understands all these things but subconscious mm. and uh, unconscious at mm. both level there are so many things uh, of the past which uh, which create the impediment or which create the problems so how uh, only just by looking how can uh, one get rid of those things of past hurts and all the those things similarly my question is also to mr uh, milin more who said that uh, all the things are changing but at the same time many things are constant also so it's a uh, the reality is made up of uh, or the actuality is made up of cost change as well as uh, the thing uh, as the constant so uh, it's not only that the things are changing say say for example my body uh, since uh, so many years there are changes in the body but uh, the personality remains the same individuality remains the same so there are so many things so how to remain free at the same time that is the question that is the real challenge so what you have to say um may i say that uh even when there is a thinking from the past comes one can see it in the present and then it doesn't create any problem but when there is no awareness then that thinking multiplies and it creates it's like a horse without the horse rider if you allow the horse it will go in all direction but if the rider is there it can make the horse go in proper direction so when there is this awareness is there it can make thought go in a proper orderly way and it doesn't create problem and if there is any problem is coming this awareness is looking at it so it requires a ongoing awareness which cannot be uh one cannot do it with effort because with effort you, you will get tired so it's not a question of will yes yes, yes. so it, again we are calling then time in between because ongoing awareness means uh, time is also involved mm. the time is moving and this awareness is looking at the time or which is outside the field of time so such awareness is required which is out of uh, time and space also yes thank you sir milin sir maybe uh, can i uh, yeah yeah uh, yes very very interesting questions uh, what i would say in fact i would like to add to what harshad sir said about the thought process or the possibility of what mr dinesh question was possibility of stopping the thought uh, i i am not so sure if there is a possibility of stopping the thought but there is a possibility of seeing its limitations and having seen the limitations something can happen out of that out of that understanding so whether response to the thought or your response to the situation or your response to or your reaction to you know whatever things around you the quality of it may change uh, and that is something which one needs to experience oneself to see so i leave it at that uh, that is one part the second uh, question uh, uh, which you mentioned was about um, uh, that that there are things which are constant uh, and uh, like you gave example of your personality and certain things which you perhaps may remember uh, from your childhood or 
as you grow you know, old, uh, they may appear to be constant. Uh, I would again like to question this, that is it really so? And uh, what is constant here is certainly my clinging to it as I see, uh, my attachment to it, that appears to be constant. But as far as uh, if I disregard that, then I'm changing all the time and I'm renewing all the time at the biological level. And if I don't hold on to things, then I see that my relationships also renew. My view about the world also changes based on what I'm holding and what I'm dropping. So I'm not so sure if there is anything which is constant or maybe in a lighter tone. I, I see only death is a constant factor. Everything else changes. Uh, so, so understanding of death, I find is, can provide that common thread in understanding many things that we are talking about. I mean, that's where the intimacy with understanding of death, I see is very, uh, is very revealing. And if that is uh, understood, then, then, uh, then I think one can see very clearly what is temporary, what is impermanent, what is permanent, what is changing, what is not changing. It's a matter of then observation and seeing things. And, and in that perception, I think uh, it, it operates. There, there is no involvement of, uh, I think I'll not mention that <laughs> because it may confuse the matter, but uh, thought has very limited space in that. That's all I have to say. Sir, what, what I uh, was uh, trying to say that uh, sun rises uh, every day and uh, Sun state also happens every day. So as far as my reference point is concerned, this uh, this is constant. This is out of time because uh, every day the same uh, phenomena is happening. Similarly, my genetic code doesn't change. My fingerprints doesn't change. So there are so many things which are constant also. Even you, you said that you have to watch the thought and watcher has to see the thought, but that watcher also re seems to remain constant. Or uh, it is, uh, in one way, it is a constant. So they, the life is made up of constant things as well as uh, the changeable things, <clears throat> isn't it? So Sir, order and uh, disorder, I, both I, are I there. I didn't say that. I, 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 I didn't say that uh, watcher is a constant. I, I didn't say that because to reach that state of uh, watching, I have to, I have to give a lot. I have to drop a lot of things uh, which we have been discussing to be in that state of mind. I am. I have. I have not reached that, and neither I can say with any confidence that that watcher is constant. Uh, so uh, that that would be a, that may be somebody else's uh, statement. Uh, what is important is, as you brought out, to uh, to see the disorder in one's life and work with that first. I am presently in that state, working on my own disorders, uh, and uh, I do see that uh, in that uh, scene. A thought has limitations. I think yes, a sir, few I... sessions back, we sorry, sir, a few sessions back we had discussed about uh, that uh, if there's only one kind of understanding and that is mechanical understanding. Uh, other than that, it's all just seeing and perception. I I know it's it's a very uh, difficult thing to discuss, or it it is to be seen only at a personal level. Uh, so I leave it at that. Uh... Yes, sir. I do agree that uh, thoughts is also, also go comes and go. But uh, this awareness also seems to be constant. A quality of awareness. If we see uh, this awareness per se, this also seems to be constant. Yes, I mean, I what you're saying from my experience, I can, I do feel that yes, there is something which, in spite of one's life's ups and downs. In spite of one's life difficulty, there is in all of us, in fact, uh, at least I can say for myself, there is there is a factor of something which is uh, which is which is kind of you know there, which is not affected by any of this. It springs back. Now, what is that? So I think we'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Thank May you. I request Asad Parikh sir to interfere and say? Yeah.
like in our tradition, uh, the, this sloka as Shankaracharya says, I am not body, I am not mind. Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. It's, it's a projecting something which is beyond the body and mind. Uh, but I think Krishnaji would not say such thing. Uh, he doubted. And uh, only thing he talked about was this awareness, which can see whatever is happening. And, uh, and he said that his mind was like a well-tuned drum. And you strike the drum and it gives a sound. So his mind was fully tuned. <clears throat> so if somebody asks a question to Krishnaji, mm -hmm. and the answer will come spontaneously from somewhere, maybe from he himself cannot tell from where this answer coming. So such a state he was in. And, but he did not say it is uh, Shiva, Ham Shiva, or Chidananda Rupa. Uh, he, he did not use the, those words. He wanted to be quite different than tradition. So yes, sir. But okay. many times, sir, he has given. Uh, many times, uh, sir, he has given indication. Parik, yeah. sir. Many times yeah. he has given indication that if you uh, come so far, Empathy. then perhaps that Anansi. which is beyond uh, may come into picture or may come into being. May I ask two small questions? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Is it audible, sir? Yes, audible. Both. So first, we have been, we have seen that words have failed in telling us anything about both these important things, death as well as love, right? Another thing is, so we chose, we chose a method of negation. As you just said, Shankaracharya said this, Krishnamurti said this, that he says neither this nor this nor this, that nor all that. But at times, Krishnaji is very positive in telling what Love is. So I'll read three, four lines that will make the things clear. When there is love, this is a dialogue between Pupul Jakar and Krishnamurti. When there is love, there is total responsibility. Not only to your family, but responsibility for all that is happening around you. Politically, economically, Socially, the pollution that is taking place. So he explains love like this. Now, through negation, we straight away said it is abnegation of self even. There should not be, if self is there, love is not. Now, this fellow, I am Pradeep, listening with the self, listening to words, thoughts, Milenji was telling, uh, telling that uh, listening without thoughts, whatever is served is in the form of thoughts. So naturally, I am listening to the thoughts. I may not have judgment, I may not be judgmental, but thoughts are there. Who is the, is it, is it the abnegation of self? The one who says that I have learned a lot in relationship. So this I, which we very beautifully use this I and say something very big afterwards, is it not, is it abnegation of the self? The self is not listening, self is not talking, self, why, why we, these are idealistic to me, practically speaking, I'm telling you, I listen as thoughts, I read as thoughts, but thought is so very important because this is all we have. So self, telling that abnegation of self, if it is there, love is not there. I don't, I don't understand this. 
because I have also felt heart and mind what love is. Everybody has felt it in his life, in some way or the other. So ultimately, less than whole, less than whole, everything is self. The moment I start talking, it is separation of the whole. So this is one has to question whether there is abnegation of self really. And who understands? Who learns? Who listens? Who reads? So this is this is easy to. I can understand all the words that have been used, and I have read all those words. But this this keeps me. Uh, I am always concerned about really what we are saying. Do we leave that? Is it abnegation of self? Is it self is not there? Please, thank you very much. If you can say something about it, Moreji or Harshad ji, please. Yes. <coughs> After your answer, Anand sir will question sir because you are he has okay. raised and so we have to yeah. answer his question okay. also. After after this yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pradeep ji said, "Thought is all we have." I do not agree with that. There is something else apart from thinking. Now to, to say that there is something called awareness, I am using thought. But if I, I am not speaking, then I can look without thought. I can look at a tree or a human being or a sky or a sunset. And uh, in that, there is great beauty. And in, in that state, there is no I, me. This I, me will come when I am expressing, I am talking, I am discussing. And that will come because we are using language and thinking to communicate. But when we are not communicating, we are not talking with each, other, uh, with, with each other, when we look at the sky, stars, we can look without this sense of self. And in that there is a great beauty, love, all that exists. So that is what Krishnaji is also talking about. And uh, he is also using words and thoughts. But when he looked at it, nature, he looked without the self. But later on, he came to his room and started writing in commentaries on living, describing the beauty of nature. Then he was bringing all those images in writing. So I would say thinking is not everything, every, all we have. There is something else, a different instrument, which can look at thinking very clearly. And everything else is very clear. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. I never said thought is everything. I will okay. never say that. But thought as a judge, whether as a judge thought is there by looking or seeing or uh, seeing around, and as a judge, I am there, then it's a problem. Otherwise, it's not a problem. You see, yes. thought, yes. thoughts are there. Thought Without thought, how will you see? He has beautifully described the leaf, the curling leaf, the drying leaf, the hanging leaves and flowers and everything he has talked about it. So when not judging, I'm not saying it is good or bad, then it is not. I never said that thought is every thought is everything. No, it cannot be. Thought is a very small part of my brain based on my capacities and capabilities. So it can it can it's a, it's a foolish statement if I do that. Other than that, from where I get thought, the stream the ocean from where I get these things. But the thing is, my question is whether it's the abrogation of self. Who learns? Who enjoys this beauty of nature without judgment, of course? I said the other day also, when you see wildflowers, you don't know what it has, what genus it belongs to. And so that is, I'm not saying thought is necessary to enjoy that. So please, uh, 
I may not be misunderstood that way, but okay. what practically life we are leading is based on thoughts, discussions, topics, quoting people. This is all. These, these are all words and thoughts, and there is self is there very much. Yeah. Who understands? So this is what exactly I want to say. Thank you very much. I have taken a lot of time. Sir, Ram, Anand, sir, Anand, sir, Anand, sir, please go ahead. Anand, sir, please go yes, ahead. Yes, sir. Anand. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? I'm sorry. Sir. Yes, yes, we can hear. Mm. Yeah, yes, sir. So these are only a few observations, sir. I mean, the last point was uh, what Mr. Verma was talking about. I mean, I I do agree with him. When when I condemn something, I have no understanding of it. When I condemn thought, I have no understanding of it. That is my observation, sir. And the other observation, sir, when I keep quoting other great mystics and other people. Is it because I I I I feel that I am small? I therefore quote somebody else is what my uh, what I am looking at is sir. Because when I have understanding, when I know what love is, why do I have to quote Krishna Murthy or anybody else? Is is it, it's can I see that or is it my own contradictions? It's in, it is my own misunderstanding or I don't understand things the right perspective. Uh, I I wouldn't want to go beyond that, sir. That, that's my observation. That's all there is, sir. No, nothing more than that. Sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Parikh sir, Parikh yes. sir, may I request you to keep the subject seeing is doing next okay. week. Okay. Yeah. Right. You are agreeing to it. Yeah. You will you will have to start it for thirty thirty five minutes and then Chidanand ji and Milan Moore will join it. That will be the frame. Now four minutes are left. Please conclude. Please conclude. Yeah. Okay. okay. A few things. Uh, just yeah. Just uh, listening to Pradeep ji and uh, Anand ji. Uh, is both of you actually are right, and all of us are right in a way of uh, saying that words and thoughts and uh, you know these things are limited certainly. Uh, but the big, I think the important question is that. Uh, is that question uh, also moving inward towards me uh, am i also you know seeing it uh, inwardly uh, because you see uh, it's very easy to say so and so words so and so speaking this way or we are quoting this and all we are all taking uh, them in my understanding as tools as perhaps crutches to certain extent because i have not understood it fully at this moment and i find great delight in uh, seeing a certain uh, alignment uh, when you see something like this uh, a certain resonance and a resonance is not to be misconstrued as complete understanding one still needs to work on it and that question is more inward than outward so if that is the if we look at it in the spirit of that Uh, understanding then these questions will not come again and again because as i said my request for taking the topic of death was based on this only that we keep questioning we keep arguing but are we really looking in words are we really dying to uh, even the questions which are arising in our mind can we see the limitations of that it is not about stopping the thought it is not about uh, completely doing away the thought thought has a place uh and that is where uh, the uh, the understanding of living perhaps where putting everything in its place comes in put the thought in its place and look in word uh again look in word may become another word for all of us but i would say uh, let's not argue about it and uh, uh, let 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 it be directing in word directed in word that's all. thank you but sir uh, but sir thank you Sir, but negation is the most positive action, sir. Not positive action. How do I understand that? Questions are the answers. I have to question. You may say, you may say it is very frivolous. You may say it's very profound. The moment I say it's frivolous and profound, I'm back to my conditioning. Can I look at the question? It may be a stupid question, sir. But can I listen to the question? Is what it is. What Kate has spoken about. And if I say it's very frivolous, right, very stupid, it's very profound. Again, I'm back to the my conditioning. Over, sir. Yes, sir. So you're, you're right. Sir, I mean, sir, please conclude. Parikh, sir, please conclude. Time is yes. over. So please yeah. conclude. Okay, I would say the words which come 
from silent clarity such words affect many human beings and the words of krishna murti did affect my life it really changed something a different way of living came just by reading the book i did not know even uh, i had not met him it was just the reading the book because that words they have lot of power because it comes from clarity and so there are other people also mistakes when they say something it affects many people so it is not that words are not necessary words have power great power it depends on the person who is listening or reading how he is doing it so either a person like many people read krishnamurti books and some people are not touched by it and some people are intellectually touched and some people are very deeply touched that it becomes for them a way of life living so it has to do with the person who is reading or listening and of course it has to do with those words whether those words have come from silent clarity or not so okay. i have one question for you sir when yeah. you say krishna murti has changed my life can i see myself operating there is my question sir the moment i say i am changed can i look at no, that is my question sir that's about all no, nothing it, more than that thank you uh, it is just a fact i am saying that's all even when i say it's a fact sir fact does not has to be told fact is a fact truth is truth the moment i say truth it's from my background the self is operating suppose you are doing something which is right the whole world may disagree with you but you know that is right that's about all you don't have to say anything about it it may cost my life for that but i'm willing to do it yeah. but the moment i say i have changed can i observe i am back to my conditioning back to myself thank you sir no even when somebody asks krishna ji whether a student asks krishna ji can you look at the tree without the images and krishna ji said of course i can otherwise i will not be talking about it so krishna ji also mention many things about his own life so it doesn't mean that if i say something about myself it means that the i has uh, is very very active ego egoistic it's not like that so somebody asked a question to krishna murthy sir again when he says he looked at the tree you and i are looking at the tree with the word tree most of the time we fail to understand that it may be a neem tree or a tamarind tree or something like that but when the moment i say it's a tree it's an image yeah. so when a student had asked he has replied but he doesn't say i he doesn't go and say i'm a enlightened person i understand my thought is not operating he never said that so oh, what what i think what i think is it's a uh, it's not wiping out of the ego it's a freedom from the ego these two things are different what do you have to say arshad sir ah uh, yes uh, it may come but when it sir, comes sir. one one can see it uh, it has come yes yes it's like a fear also sir sir it is already it will always remain it is already 733 please yes. let it be finished and continue like seeing is doing please please okay. because we are okay. going on in one direction thank you very much sir thank you sir expect thank you sir thank you thank you thank everybody you. anand sir and yes, everybody who thank, thank to all sir uh, do you know hilary sir oh arsha sir, sir do you know hilary from canada yeah yeah he is yes, a speaker yes yes, yes. yeah yeah so he is a student ha on sunday and time is 9 am 9 am so you will okay. be requested you are requested oh. so please do come all 20 persons who, have, who are here are requested to join at 9 am repeatedly saying 9 am okay okay thank you very thank much thank you kamlesh ji okay. please finish thank it you. Okay. thank you sir thank you very okay. much thank